And at this time, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who come in late, we are now having a little cooking session right here on the scene. Putting the pot on in here. And we'd like for you to join in with us and have a ball. Okay, so in the last video, I talked about how to go about creating pages, moving pages, deleting pages, and using page templates. So this time, I'm going to talk about um, some formatting. So I've grabbed some kitty ism here, just so I can have some text for my page. And instead of having this, you know, wall of text, I'm going to go ahead and um, create some paragraphs here. I'm actually adding extra character returns because the way that Kitty lives comes over, it looks like it's a paragraph, but it's not really. So I'm just going to force it to be. All right, so Confluence has all the things you would expect to be available when you want to format text, bold, underline, italic, text color, strike through, bullets, you know, what have you, alignments. Um, but I'm going to work with, so you see everything is defaulted as paragraph. I'm going to go ahead and put some H2s here. Now, I like to start in my page with H2s because the H1 is the same size as the page title. And that just irks me when there's other text that same size um, in something that's the simple. It's just meant to be like an article, I guess. Okay, and this one. And just for fun, let's put in a sub to that using an H3, all right? So the reason that I wanted to do this is so that I can create the table of contents. Before I create the table of contents though, oops. right now my text is in one section full width. I am to format this page, I'm gonna create another section. So where I'm gonna put my table of contents. So I just hit add section. It's gonna add at the bottom of whatever section I'm in. So if I had multiple sections underneath this, it would have added to below this one because that was the one I was in when I hit add. So I can move it up. And then instead of being full column, I'm gonna make this a 50-50. Um, my advice is I don't, I mean, like, unless you have really small like items on the page, I wouldn't do a three column because these pages are like responsive. So if you get really thin, like a, a three column on a small window, it's gonna be, you know, hard to, to manage. So, all right, so to create a macro, table content is a macro, I can come into the plus sign and I can choose from the list and you see that table content is popular so it's already in the list. If what I want is not, I can go into this other macro and choose and we'll do a video later about some other macros. Or I can just type, use a curly bracket and start typing what I want, but it automatically suggests table contents because it's a popular one. Okay. And now I can show you what that looks like. So here's my table of contents. And if I click on an item, it goes straight to that item, which is really nice. Okay. Um, somehow I made this not an H2, so let's fix that. All right, so what I do want to do, though, in my table of contents is I want it to have the title of table of contents. So it does just look like some random text at the top of the page. Oops. I didn't mean to save. Okay, and I'm making this an H2. So there's something that's gonna cause a problem with this and I'm gonna show you how what's gonna happen. So because I made this an H2, look, my table of contents is listed in my table of contents. This is something that is very annoying for lots of people. They're not sure how to work it out. So I am going to show you exactly how to fix that. If I click on edit, I can scroll down here to exclude headings and type table of contents. And if I do preview, you see that it goes away. There's a time I can put include headings, but I have never actually used this. I guess if I made my maximum heading level, like maybe I say the maximum I go is like two, but then I wanted to make sure I captured this 
one three I can do that but I just I haven't had need of it you might um, I can also change the, whether this is a list or like a flat um, a flat list or whether it's like a, a bulleted list and I can fix the indents with some CSS if I wanted to so there's some options in here you know feel free to explore um, if you do have access to doing some CSS stuff on your page then you can use a class name but honestly our version of CSS doesn't we, we lock that ability down so now when I click update you'll see that that table contents is now removed. So that's that's absolutely perfect. So that's what we wanted. So um, one other thing of note is that every time I update a page, it's notifying people that I'm updating because that by default, this is turned on. I could actually say what I've changed so that people know. Um, if I'm just making some minor pages, minor changes, like maybe I'm doing some you know, corrections, like this always interestingly has two L's. I just saw that. Uh, it says how cats spell always. Uh, if I'm just doing some minor changes, like maybe I don't need to let everybody know that I did that. And so I will turn that off. But if I want to make sure they see that I've made updates, then I can keep that on. All right. So that's it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about um, doing a page properties report. So how do I want to track, you know, the status of this page and the status of pages that I'm, that I'm working on in this, you know, sandbox article section. So stay tuned for that. And again, if you have things that you're trying to learn about Confluence, leave me a note and I will see about making a video on that. Bye.